while we will uh, be allowing public testimony on the bill, I will need to stop and I will stop any testimony that does not pertain to the impact on the Secretary of State of putting the constitutional amendment on the ballot. So, so two questions to it. Uh, eligible individuals, I would like for you to explain to me what that means. Senator Torres Ray, it's I, you know, I'm, right I'm going to stop here because I, I just okay. don't, I, I'm, not, I'm not seeing as this as relevant to this and, and what's happening with the Secretary of State, that question. Uh, just bear with me. Mm -hmm. So before, before I want to continue, I think what, what we need to do is listen to the Secretary of State because we're here to see how a constitutional amendment, <coughs> folks, not photo ID, not marriage amendment, we're here to find out what a constitutional amendment will create for the Secretary of State. Um, and so that's, that's the path that we are going to go down here today. And, and with all due respect, Senator, I, I think that's getting uh, off the path that I believe is, is the right direction. Topic. Senator Goodwin. I just wanted to remind the Chair that we have a new bill in front of us now. And so this particular bill, this delete all amendment, has not been heard in any committee yet. So I think my advice would be it's fair game to discuss this new language so everybody understands that even though we did have a five hour hearing in the past, it wasn't on this language. Well, it's Senator Goodwin, with all due respect, it's substantially the same. And we're not going to go down that path today. We're going to deal with how this affects the Secretary of State's office. There are two core elements that affect our office, of course. One so, is the, excuse, uh, I, 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 I want to clarify one more thing mm -hmm. here, Secretary of State. Um, we are talking about the impacts on your office right now. We, we're not going into the impacts that could happen in out years. We're, t we're talking about the impacts here because, as I said, when when this does get to finance, I'm sure there, there are some, there are going to be some questions on the impact of, of current year, you know, what, what it will take um, for this constitutional amendment. Because I do know that there will be testifiers uh, probably show up in finance from cities, counties, uh, questioning the impact down the road. Well, okay. thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm just focusing on what our office is looking at in terms of the constitutional amendment. And and please cut me off if this if you know our planning. The um, thank you, Mr. Chair. One one Senator comment. Goodwin. I do believe that um, in finance, which I'm on, um, rarely are we able to discuss the policy in the bill because then we're told that it's only about the uh, money in the bill and not about the policy. So. I don't know if you have something worked out with Senator Roebling, but if you don't, we're not going to be able to hear this, th these exact provisions in here and in that committee and discuss them. So I hope you two have worked this out because otherwise this bill, very important bill to the state of Minnesota, is not going to get a full and open discussion. I, and and uh, I, I hear uh, you. I have, we have spoke with Senator Roebling. This bill will be heard. Uh, and as I mentioned, uh, with these few, uh, a couple of minor changes, this bill is significantly the same that did get its five and a half hour hearing previously in state government. Um, Senator, can you can help me to understand what kind of take me through the mechanisms if I vote as, in, in an absentee ballot and if this bill goes into law? How, how does that flow? How does that work to ensure? that if I am in Kuwait or if I am out of town on business legitimately, how does my vote get counted? I'm not sure, Mr. Chair. I like, I, you know, I didn't, I'm not sure I don't sit on the finance committee, nor do I sit in local gov and, and Senator, I mean, uh, Secretary Ritchie kind of talked about it. Senator Carlson kind of brought it up. So I'm, I'm just not quite sure how we're going to, how we go through this bill if, if we can't get any questions answered, and I think that's a legitimate question. And, and with, with that being said, just that much leniency here because Secretary Ritchie started this. I'm, I'm kidding, yeah. Secretary. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, so, thank you. Please, yes. Uh, Senator Hay so so we, don't, we don't quite know how that would work yet because we haven't 
develop that? I, I really am Cor correctly a confused, because sir. there will be stipulations being developed next year in law to address many of, of these items. And and you there's in my mind there's no way at this point in time that we can get to uh, that point without knowing whether or not uh, this gets on the ballot. Once it gets on the ballot and the decision is made, at that point in time, the legislature will have to come back then and address specifically what we're, you're, you're speaking of and what the secretary well, Mr. Chair, so, so, Mr. Chair, that then, that then says that then the citizens who got to vote on this, if it does make it to the ballot, don't actually know what they're voting on because maybe that might be a consideration if they are going to vote yes or no, if they know that they their son or daughter in Kuwait could mail in their ID and their ballot at the same time or a photograph of that. I mean, I just don't know how, I just don't know how to tell the, the people who I represent what the bill, how the bill is going to work if we are going to put it on the ballot for them to say yes or no and then backfill that with a bunch of laws and provisions that they don't know. I, I'm looking at Senator Cohen and others that have really worked on this bill, but I'm I'm thoroughly confused, and I think the electorate would okay. be confused. So, um, the, the, my quick comment is, I was certainly prepared to follow the admonition of the chair relative to debate and committee on this bill, but Mr. Chairman, your response about well, we'll just have to kind of wait and see if it passes, then we'll figure it out. I, I think the cliche is buying a pig in a poke. Um, I, I'm a little bit unsettled by your comment to the extent that we just accept in good faith we're going to figure all this out. Um, so that, that concerns me. Good Mr. afternoon, Mr. Chairman. My name is Carolyn Jackson. I'm the lobbyist, lobbying coordinator for the ACLU of Minnesota. And so before, before I, we get started, sure. please remember that we are specifically talking about getting uh, how an, uh, a constitutional amendment gets on the ballot here. In, if you please, Senator, I do have a question for you about that. Um, my testimony is about two different um, aspects of this. The first is that is our reading of this constitutional amendment that it changes the structure of state government. And if it's not heard in this committee, I don't know where that concern would be raised. The second one is about um, the effect on the Secretary of State's office of putting this on the ballot um, and the lawsuits ensuing from that action, not from anything that would happen after the November 2012 election. So um, those are the two parts of my testimony. But I do have a question for you. If this does create a new state, it's a constitutional amendment that changes the structure of our state government. And if it's not heard here, where would I present that testimony? You have me intrigued right now. So um, <laughs> I'm going to let you move forward. Um, Does it match? And it will create a, a cottage industry of lawsuits, um, sort of ongoing every time someone's turned away. Because it creates a new unfunded mandate. Ms. Jackson, I, I'm I, I, think, I think we get that part. Uh, I have one sen two sentences left. May I say them, please? creates a new unfunded mandate and substantial, sub, subjects the state to substantial legal costs, we urge the committee to vote no. Thank you very much. I do think that we should be asking voters, is this important to you? I don't think we have to ask them, if it's important to you, how do we implement every last single detail in order to accomplish your goal? I think that's what we do after the voters have spoken and said this is our common goal. And if they had a picture ID, they would be able to use the government-issued ID to vote. Correct. And, Correct. And, and Mr. Go on to the next one. Mr. Johnson. Yeah? You're, you're really off. I, I get what you're saying. I think everybody understands what you're saying. But you're off track here when we're specifically talking about a, a constitutional amendment and what it takes for the Secretary of State uh, to get that on the ballot, and, and that's where we're at. You're, you, you're out in testimony that has been given already uh, in local government, uh, and so I, I just... Okay. Then I will go on to, to uh, points more direct. These points were points I've taken as listening to the Secretary of State give his testimony, and, and this was basically a rebuttal. Okay. Right, and, and I, I think I'm going to stop you there, Mr. Johnson, because... Um, I, we, we get your point. We, we understand what you're trying to say, sir, and I appreciate you. 
Uh, I would like to have you uh, contact my office uh, with, with your information, sir, uh, and uh, I appreciate uh, you taking the time off. Uh, and it's unfortunate that, that um, we're, just, we're just not going down that path. To as our testifiers come up and they're kind of on your track and off your track, but as they kind of bring other issues into discussion, I think it's a, it's a little tough for me to sit here and not be able to at least ask them follow-up questions. I want to make sure that as they make their statements, they're not misinformation that they're kind of sending out to the public. So I, I would really hope that we could stick to what you really wanted this hearing to be. Or if not, then, Mr. Chair, we should get an opportunity to, to at least ask a question of the, some of the testifiers to clarify the statements. Correct, Senator Hayden, and, and I can't agree with you more. I don't know what they're going to testify as. They have not written it out, so I could have pre-read that. So I'm, I'm specifically for, for like Mr. Um, uh, Johnson, who came, took a day off, I want to allow as much leniency until I can gather exactly what path they're going down. I, I get you. I, I understand what you're saying, Senator Hayden, and, and uh, uh, thank you for that comment. This is the State Government Committee, and this is the place to hear this thoroughly. And I know there are other people that would like to talk on this bill. And if we're putting constitutional amendments on the ballot because we want to hear from the people, then let's start that process here in this room and let people come up and testify on it, because I know there's a number of other issues that people have concern about.